Peterson says there are many names circulating on social media for professional calibration services. Is it worth the investment? How exactly, how exactly can it make a difference? And that's, that's the issue is like, what's professional, right? Oh yeah. What is professional? Because I have some people who have that I would consider, you know, a lot of people would consider professional and I've had people with Trinovs using magic beans and they said, Hey, I had this guy that I will not name, right? Work on my system and magic beans does a better job than this guy did. And this guy's a professional, right? Uh, like professional enough to work on, uh, let me see if, uh, no, nah, I wouldn't be giving it away. It's not, I'll tell you, it's not Anthony Grimani. So okay. if you guys are trying to guess, it's not him, but somebody who's professional enough that they work on the RP 22 guidelines, right? So you got, you know what that is, Aaron? The No, I was just about to Google it. It is like the, you know, they have the CTA, and they they came out with some guidelines on how to set up your speakers for, uh, for home theater, where to place them, all these different factors. Oh, it's a Cedia thing. Cedia thing. Okay. Is oh, not- yeah. yeah, we've talked about this. I've seen this. I'm looking at it now. So, would you consider somebody who worked on that professional? I would. I would. I would hope so. But I will say that I, um, I know. Yeah, never mind. I'm not saying it. Okay. Okay. So- so I I'm, not, I'm not trying to yeah we don't want to do that. down to bring myself yeah, up right right i'm yeah. only say, speaking the truth and saying to answer your question specifically that is somebody i would consider a professional they're yeah. writing the, the, the guidelines right but the person the customer told me that they're getting better um you know better result using over over what they got with somebody else right that person came over did it manually and uh they're getting better results now the thing is to me a lot of this stuff is still evolving so that's not even to downplay this person maybe once this person finds out hey magic beans oh yeah maybe they'll evolve magic beans and make it better yeah but we're constantly learning so i feel like magic beans is on the forefront of a lot of this stuff and um yeah, I would love to see more professionals using it. You know, I would love to see what what Anthony Gramani has to say about it. He has a copy. We've talked for a couple hours about it. So let's see what happens. But yeah, I, I would with professional stuff, it's tough. Yeah, I think it it I would treat it no differently than I would if I were getting my car stereo installed by somebody and it was I was paying a good bit of money, or if I was having any kind of work done. Um, you ask for the portfolio of work and you ask for people who they worked on and see if you can get their contacts and then contact those people and ask mm-hmm. them. That's and if you have a good installer or custom installer, somebody who's gonna be doing the work for you, they shouldn't have an issue giving you that information as long as you know the other people are okay with having their information given out. But yeah, you just need a, a portfolio of work and some testimonials. That's what I was looking for. Testimonial, okay. Yeah, but not on their website. Like, you, if you can, try to find the people who... Have, and, dude, Facebook is a great way to do it. Join one of these Facebook groups. You're probably already on one. That's probably how you've heard about these names. Privately They're, message some of the people who indicate that they've had work done and ask them about their experience from top to bottom and then get a couple different names together. I'm, I'm with Joe when it comes to this industry. Um... I don't know what makes the telltale sign for a professional. For me, just having been doing this for a while in this YouTube space and meeting some of the people that I've met, I've got enough contacts. Like, for example, if there was something I was really curious about and I knew that Joe might know somebody, I mm-hmm. would ask Joe. Um, I think on this channel, I don't know if it's good for us to necessarily recommend anybody or endorse anybody because I don't know if there's anybody specifically that we could or should do mm-hmm. that for. Um, I've sent some people a couple different ways and they've had pleasant experiences, but then other times, you know, they've not gone with somebody I recommended and they've gone with somebody else and, and that worked out as well too. Well, I could, I can recommend Anthony Grimani just because I know his method. He's not okay. using magic okay. means, but I know he's doing like the things that he's doing specifically. Mm-hmm. I can, I would say, yep, that makes total sense. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like the fact that he's he has like some in ear monitors that he knows the frequency response of, and he's listening to pink noise, and he's listening to the speaker and this, and seeing do they sound tonally similar? Like yeah. that makes perfect sense. Yeah. But who else sure, does sure. that? Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, he's his methods are are sound. Right. Uh-huh. Um. Then there you go. I guess, uh, yeah, it's just tricky because there's no metric to say whether something's good. Have you have you used uh, Wim's auto EQ? Yeah, it was kind of funky. It was pretty bad. Like, yeah, on mine, I'm like, ooh, that's. I love you guys, but dude, this is not good, right? Yeah. But go to go to the forum, and look at the look at people's response to that auto EQ. Oh man, it really made it sound better. It's almost all positive, right? Yeah. Because it made a change. It yeah, made some yeah. sort of change, and they assume that that change is better. But yeah, that's a problem though because it actually made it worse. I will tell you right now, it probably made it worse. So, what's to say that this professional is going to come over, make some changes that are going to make it worse, and you're going to say, "Oh yeah, that's totally worth it." That's yeah, based that's, on what metric? That's no different than kind of like I talked about earlier when I was saying there's that one speaker that I that I've been listening to that I'm reviewing soon that I really like. The kit one that's like 950 euro a, a pair um you know if you let somebody listen to those and then you let somebody listen to a speaker that's colored they're going to choose the one that's more neutral just by default i mean we, that's a science we know that to be the yes. case there's no question about that mm-hmm. so what happens is people who are inexperienced or don't have the ability to a b quickly between a neutral speaker and a very colored speaker they may like a certain couple things about the colored one but not realize that there's something much better on the other side. There's a better alternative because all they know is the thing that's in front of them. So Mm -hmm. like you're saying, if they pay somebody to come out and do all this work, then the assumption is that it's going to be right. And then there's a lot of times where I've run into this myself. I've had plenty of people do this where they'll say that, you know, I listened to this speaker and I thought it was great, but then I went and listened to the other one and I realized how wrong I was, right? Because you just don't know any better until you have the opportunity to to hear something better. Yeah, it's it's just there's... It's hard because there's no metric to, to, to say whether they did a good or bad job, right? Yeah. With video calibration, there are, there are you know certain standards and they got to yeah. hit these, you know, uh, there's a delta E and it tells you how far off they, they are. Um, with speakers, it's more like if there was a way to send every calibrator uh, KEF Blade 2 Meta and if the room is somewhat decent, right, the their EQ to that speaker above the transition region should pretty much be nothing shouldn't do anything yeah right, it's already right. excellent right yeah if you yeah. run magic beans which, which is fully automatic i'm confident that the correction above that would just be like don't do anything just yeah. leave it leave it as is so that's the metric right and i think that what you'd find if you ran magic beans on a decent speaker is it's going to make the on axis new uh near field response more neutral mm-hmm. right it'll it'll do that i mean that's not that's that's doable, right? To and it'll do it in a smart way so it doesn't make it sound horrible, right? Um, and it'll make the bass smoother. I mean, it's not not crazy. Anything the stuff that we're doing is not nuts. What's hard is that I have to support all these AVR, and pro, you know, and and pre pros that I'm not working with directly, and we sup- we output something that will work with all of them. That's the hard part. Mm-hmm. And we make it easy for someone who has no idea what they're doing. It just spits out an answer and they're like, oh, cool. Yeah. Totally. Now, if you can't catch the show, we do have an audio version at anchor.fm slash daily hi-fi. So make sure to go on over there if you like to listen to the show.